So minimum is all is just hopefully, like I said, you guys already know sort of these these vocabulary words. So minimum is going to be the smallest number in the list of data. Maximum, obviously, to that same is going to be your largest number. Now, what I would suggest always and the most common mistakes I've found students make is just like silly errors. Because again, this is math. This is eighth grade math again, if not even middle school math, some of it. Um, but you'll just get in a hurry knowing it's easy and then you don't translate perfect. But I would put them in order always because it helps you check back. So two looks like our smallest number. Four, six, and also just because we're all kind of new to each other. If I make a mistake and you see it, holler at me. It does not hurt my feelings. I mean, you know, don't yell, but like talk to me because it happens between watching cameras and trying to make sure everything's still working and writing. I am very prone to getting distracted regardless of being on a computer. But so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would always cross check. So ten numbers. Yep. Like I missed 23 and I cross out. So that way I know, like when I look up that I missed. So I have 11 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So now I know I have them all. And I know that sounds really silly. But again, small things. The, if you get a question this easy, you should definitely get it right. So our smallest number is going to be 2. So that's our minimum. Our largest number is going to be your maximum. That's 23. And then our Q1, Q2, and Q3. So right now we're just doing five number summary. Um, Q1, Q2, and Q3 are going to be more applicable to box and whiskers, which we'll do tomorrow. But right now you're doing histograms because I didn't want to hit you with anything too wild and crazy because box and whiskers are their favorite on the EOC and they really get into a lot of um, understanding and interpreting and conversations. Um, Q1 and Q3 and Q2. So Q2, the other word for Q2 is median. And that just means middle. So the middle of this. So you're going to count in. So I have two. I'm going in two by two. And this is going to be your median. So there's your median. If it had happened to have been an even set of numbers, like 10 instead of 11, and say we came in and it was between 8 and 10, then you would add them together and divide by 2. Or if you can visually like 8 and 10, you can see a number line. The number in between that would be 9. So the median would be 9. And it would just be like a space. But the value would be 9. In this case, the first one we got, we got 11. So it's a nice odd number. So they're easy. Q1, theoretically, is the median of your, up, your lower quartile. So this whole section. So it's the median of this data. So the middle of the lower half. So we're going to go here. And we're going to come in. And so here we run into that 6 and 7. So the middle of 6 and 7 would be 6.5. And you are going to run into decimals. That is definitely a thing. So don't panic. Welcome to high school math. In the event your middle school teacher kind of veered you away from them. There wasn't as many if I remember correctly. And then your Q3 is going to be the other side. So the middle of the upper quartile. So again, you're going to go from here to here. Come in, middle of 12 and 16, so if that math doesn't make sense, and if you can't visualize it, it's 12 plus 16, which is going to give you 28, divide by 2, so the middle number is going to be 14. Now, that is the most basic five number summary, is what that's called, five number summary, so minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, and maximum. Now, maybe newer, a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry, not yet. We're still doing old stuff. So range, I want you to add range to the conversation. And that's just the max minus the min. And it's max minus min because the range will always be positive. So if you flip them like min, min minus max, just know that it has to be a positive number because it's how far, like the distance between the two numbers. So it has to be positive. So in this case, we're going to take our max, so 23, and our min, 2. You're going to subtract them. And so our range is going to be 21. Hopefully that you've all seen, all of this stuff, hopefully at this point you've seen before now. If not, like I said, give me a holler. I think 
from what I've heard from students in the past, your newness is going to be IQR. So IQR. Um, and I'm going to write it over here because I've written kind of big. And that's enter quartile range. So Q1 is quartile 1, quartile 2, quartile 3. So inner quartile range is going to be Q3 minus Q1. Now, that's the one that I've had most students forget what, it, what it's asking for. So that's why I assume it's the newer of the, of the fun things that we're learning for you guys. Um, but so you're going to take your Q3, so 14, minus Q1, which is 6.5. And I'm writing on top of my numbers. They look so pretty. So 14 minus 6.5. And again, this is likely to be on the on a, on a calculator, so use it. Um, it's the biggest thing I realized I've had to fight math three students on. There's lots of times when I want you to not use the calculator. When I tell you like you're going to have a calculator in active question of this, I highly recommend at that point you practicing without one because you do need some number sense. Uh, but if it is likely to be a calculator active question, I'm all about you practicing with a calculator. And your parents will be happy to hear this because I remember when I was in school, we used to always complain when they say, use you, you can't use a calculator. And we'd always say, well, we're going to always have access to a calculator. And the reality is you will. That is absolutely accurate, except for this class on the EOC for about 15 questions, <laughs> which is, I, I mean, no, it is what it is. So we want to not, not be terrible at it. So we want to have a vague understanding of how to do it without a calculator. And basically, I mean, actually better than vague, but we don't want to make careless errors as well. So we want to double check it. If you try it without a calculator, like you're just pushing yourself, then go back and double check with your calculator. Um, now, TI-8384, and I would write this somewhere. I will post it again before the end of the week for sure as some of our work. And our instructions for that, I can't make everything fit. You're going to go to Stat, Edit, so your first step is stat, then you're going to click edit, and like I said, I will find out if they've pushed those out to you guys and where to find them on your computer if you don't have them yet, but you will, because I raised cane last semester, so you will get calculators on your computers. Um, so you just write down stat, then you're going to hit edit. In your L1, you're going to put in all your numbers. They do not have to be in order. I'm just writing, I'm going from my list that's in order because it's a little bigger and I haven't crossed it out. Um, Another one of those things where you want to kind of watch what you're doing because you will get in a hurry and all of a sudden your numbers will be in one line running up to the right left and they need to be going straight down. So you hit a number, hit enter, hit a number, hit enter, and it'll go straight down your L1. Okay, so now you have stat, stat edit, so enter your data. However many points there are. Also down at the bottom where it says L112, that means I'm sitting in the blank spot of 12, which means I have 11 numbers in there. And again, we counted them and we know that there's 11 numbers, so that's perfect. We're going to hit stat. We're going to go over to calc. So now we hit stat again. Over to calc. And we're going to do one var stat. And then push all the way through until you get to calculate because that's telling it to go. Also, I get excited and I talk really fast. So if you need me to slow down, like I said, give me like a, a ding ding or a, a something to let me know. Now, X bar is going to be your mean. So X bar is your mean, which we did not do up here, but you are going to need it later. So we'll go ahead and start. So the very first term in that list is your mean. So in this case, that's 10.8, and we'll go two decimal points. If it is never said to you, I prefer two decimal points because that's the reality of numbers in the real world. Those are pennies. Um, one decimal point or whole numbers, those days are long over unless you just happen to hit a worksheet or a program that tells you to do so. So the tenth spot in whole numbers, I do not want because that is not accurate. Um, Hundredth spot would be the second one because that's two zeros. That's why how you could know that's the hundredth spot is where I always uh, would prefer. And the number after it, if it's five or above, you round up. If the third number is five is four or below, you leave it as is. So that's why it became an eight two. So we have mean. Uh, if we go down a little further, n is the number of terms. 
And again, this is a place you can check to look back and make sure like if it was a multiple choice question, you don't have your answers not there. Make sure you have everything in there. So your minimum value is two, which is what we already had. Oh, come on, come on. There we go. Minimum value is two. Our Q1, uh oh, they said it's six. We'll go back and check that. Our Q2 is 10. And our Q3 is 14. And our max is 23. It's because we're supposed to count from right here over and here over. So like I said, calculators are great because they'll help us catch our mistakes. And in the beginning, sometimes that happens until we've done a lot of it. And again, to be very transparent, teaching all four math classes and bouncing in between, I don't do enough of any of it because you guys in the past have not shown up. Um, so I will make a mistake or two in the beginning and then we'll get rolling and we're good. The only thing your calculator will not do for you is your range, your IQR, and then our, the next we're going to get into is going to be your mode. So mode, range, IQR, it will not do for you. Everything else, the calculator will actually computate for you. This was just so you, if you wanted to check it, you could. And how to do it manually. In the event, nightmarish, they give you a question without a calculator. Um, it's not terrible. It's just not as easy as obviously just putting them in and letting it do the work for you. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip this guy for right now. I will rewrite these and post these probably later, like as a just a document you can check if you want to see it. So again, and I'm just going to show you in this way one more time just to make sure we know. So smallest number would be 4, 5, 6. Oh, man, they were really nice to this one, didn't it? 7, 8, 9, and 10. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mean, so your average, and I didn't say this earlier, so your mean or your average is where we add them all together and then divide by the total number of terms. So add all terms, then divide by number of terms. So mean is average. So that's how you used to find the average of your grades to add all the terms together, all your grades together and then divide by the total number of grades you have. So in that case, again, doing it longhand without using our calculator necessarily or the, the feature to do it for us. 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. That's 49 and we have 7 terms. So our mean is going to be 7. The mean is going to be 7. And that's, again, adding all this together and divided by the total number of terms there. Check and make sure. Sometimes, again, you'll push a wrong button. You'll get really frustrated because that is what it is. So a lot of times, especially things as simple, like I said, it's just a, a hiccup in your brain and you miss something minor. Median is a term in the middle. So we're going to count all the way through to the term in the middle. So median is the term in the middle. So in this case, our median is also 7. Mode, in this case, there is not one. But mode is the number that happens the most. So mode is most. There can be more than one mode. So in this case, likely they won't give you one like this, but it would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 because they all happen one time. So they all happen the same number of time. If we had added another 7 to the data, then it would be 7 because it happened twice. Another reason is kind of sometimes easier to write them in order to then answer these questions so you catch that you would have two 7s in your list and you would see that it happened twice or two 4s or three 10s. So it's very easy to see there. Again, range is going to be your max minus your min. So our max is 10. Our min is 4. So 10 minus 4. And that's 6. Not in the list over here for us to do, but let's do it anyway because it's a small set of numbers. Our Q1. So Q1 is the middle of the upper half. So this is going to be our Q1. And that's quartile 1. That's five. And then our Q3, because Q2 is median. So Q3 is the middle of the upper half. 
So 10, 8, and the middle is going to be 9. So this is our Q3 because, again, median is the same thing as Q2. More times than not, you hear the conversation that use the word median. But every now and again, they will hit you with the word Q2. And don't let that, like, blow your mind because it's the same. One, two, it's breaking the data into quartiles. And so Q3, in this case, was 9. Q2, again, was 7. For practice, IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1. So we have 9 minus 5. Most of you probably could do that in your head. So what is our IQR? You guys tell me. Type in the box if you don't want to talk. What's 9 minus 5? Yes. Thank you, Madeline. 4. Great. Do we have any major questions about that? Obviously, you have more instruction today in the videos as well. So if you're not super, super confident, not a huge deal because you've got lots of opportunities to practice with those five number summaries. And I probably threw in more than you actually have on your video today, but it will be in the videos tomorrow. So you're just ahead of the curve a little bit because I feel like it all sort of falls together. And then my suggestion is I would always just do all of it because they will ask a lot of questions about one set of data. And if you just have it all, then you're ready to answer numerous questions would be my suggestion. Does anybody have any questions as far as your five number summary and your um, mode range and IQR? Okay, perfect. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so frequency tables and histograms. Hopefully very easy for most of you. Um, got 15 minutes, so I'm going to go kind of quick. Ask me questions. Bleep at me if I'm going too quick. Because, again, this should be a review. So using the data below, complete the frequency table. So a frequency table is just tallies, and then you write the number. The intervals, I have found students have a hard time making them yourself. I do not foresee on an EOC or any of our type of assessments in the virtual format where you have to make your own intervals. But the idea is that your intervals have to always be the same. So in this case, 11, so it's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So these intervals are 5, so 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Again, that's 5, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's 5. They have to be um, congruent. They have to be the same little chunks of number. Like you can't do 10 to 12 and then 13 to 16. Each interval has to be the same measure set of numbers between it. So intervals have to be equivalent. Or equal just in the event something sporadic happens you have to make one again I don't feel like that's gonna be a thing in our class then you're just gonna take your data and tally it in so I have a 30 which is gonna go with our 26 to 30 I have a 32 31 to 35 11 14 40 and I'm trying to go fast so if you catch me a mistake holler at me 37 16 26, 12, 33, 13, 19, 38, 12, 28, 15, 39, 11, 37, 17, 27, 14, and 36. So then the frequency table is going to be 5, 6, 7, 8 for the interval 11 to 15. 16 to 20 has a 3. 21 to 25 has a 0. And 26 to 30 has a 4. And 31 to 35 has 2. And then 36 to 40 has 6. That is a frequency table. If you have to complete a frequency table or interpret how does Italian work? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, you're looking at each one of these numbers and pretending like these are boxes. Like if this said red, green, blue, yellow, if this falls in the red bucket, then you put a tally, just a, just a hash mark. You're just counting. You can put dots if you want. They just call them tallying. What it's saying is how many numbers. Yes, exactly. So if a number falls between 11 and 15, you're just like tallying it off here. I guess theoretically, if you wanted, you could go 11 to 15 and go up here and just circle all the ones that are between 11 and 15, and that would be the same idea. Um, so I think, I don't know how to, does that make more sense? 
I'll try to think of a different way to say. It. Okay, perfect. So you're just figuring out how many numbers between 11 and 15 are in this data, how many numbers are between 16 and 20 in this data. And most people just find it easy to go one by one and put them in their chart. But I could see where a brain would find would think it'd be easier to go 11, 15 and go circle them all. If you do that, my suggestion is use multiple colored pens because you're going to mess up. Because especially when the data is like the pieces of data get really long or if they're not in a straight line, they'll stack them like three deep. And in my opinion, you lose numbers that way. And then you mix things up just because of the format of the table, not because you don't know what you're doing, just the way it looks and you're going through it. Because again, it's one of those things that's easy. So it's easy to mess up as well. If that, like make an oops, like your brain just sort of fries. Um, all right. So tallies. So again, moving along kind of sequentially in order. So the test scores of 10 students since Ms. Sampson's homeroom were 61, 67, 81, 83, 87, and so forth. Which frequency table is accurate for the data? So I would look at all your choices. They all have the same intervals. So that is not something that's going to help you differentiate. Your choice, you may be able to see it like right off the bat. Um, maybe I would see if I can eliminate some without having to do too much work, just to minimize how much work you have to do. If there's more than two 91s to 100, so, oh, and they even gave it to you in order. So 98 and 100 are the only ones that fall between 91 and 100. So 10, 10, and 10 are no good. So you just figure out the answer by doing that. Um, I'm a big fan of working backwards from multiple choice questions. And I, and I think it's just because that's how my brain works. But again, so 61 to 70. So if we did it. 61, 67. So that's only two, right? Because 81 is after that. So you can skip the tally part because, again, these are these are in order for you as well. And if they're in order, it would be very logical to skip the tally point. So 71 to 80. We've got none there. Because we jumped to 81. 81 to 90. So 81. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then last but not least, 91 to 100 are just those last two. So 2062. So if looking at these and working backwards is overwhelming, I would make myself a frequency chart. Um, and again, the tallying part is not usually in the frequency chart. That was just to show you where those numbers came from, which it might have made it more confusing. Again, if you write them in order, super easy to go through and group them fairly fast. This is going to be more like uh, probably an EFC style question. Honestly, probably not an EFC question. But if they gave you a frequency table question, it is probably going to be a little more overwhelming in this format than just filling in a frequency table. Uh, otherwise, you're going to read it off of a histogram. So histograms, this is what frequency charts turn into. Very rarely do they just leave it as a frequency chart. So our intervals are here, which they wrote here. Notice this time it's the small numbers on the bottom, if it matters. Just make sure you're paying attention to the way things read. It's the biggest thing I found in Math 1 they like to do to you is if you're not reading the numbers on the table or the numbers on the graph on the side, they'll trick you and you'll trip. Um, so 41 to 50. So these are the test scores and this is the number of students. So that is what you want to focus on, the number of students, because we're looking at frequency. So that means how many times did it happen? The test scores you have to pay attention to, but the biggest thing is they're going to, they're asking questions about the number of students. So since they're, every other one is numbered, this is going to be three, five, seven, nine, and 11. And you know whether or not things like that stump you. If it, if it, they do, fix it, write them. And then of course one. So 41 to 50, we have three students that made those. 51 to 60, you're going to go all the way up and look over, 5, 61 to 70, there's not a bar there, so that means it's not. And the only difference between a histogram and a bar graph, because you definitely did bar graphs in middle school, is these guys are slammed together. They're like hugging, but ultimately it's the exact same thing. It's how many did it occur in that interval. So 71, 80, it's going to be 12. And sometimes these are names, just like back in middle school when you had bar graphs. And so like it would be, you know, like Snickers, like Hershey bars, things like that as well, and how many people did it. So from 81 to 90, it's 8. And then 91 to 100 is 2. Complete the frequency table and you just answered the question. That's it. So reading it from a histogram versus reading it from a set of data, your bars 
show you how many are in it. So again, in this case, you definitely are not tallying. Okay. Perfect. Uh, good question. I mean, one thing to point out, and this is just throwing in some EOC style, depending on where you are, as far as understanding what we're going, if this is too much, then let it go, let it slide, you'll get there eventually. The range of this data, you can't answer that question because you don't actually know what the highest score was or what the lowest score was. The range of intervals you can answer because it's 41 to 100, but range of class scores, you do not have enough information because you, this could be all 49s. This could be all 43s and that would still fit in here, which means 41 does not mix. It doesn't actually exist. It just made the interval sets match because remember they have to be congruent between each one. So range, you cannot answer in this question. Um, mode, you could do the mode of interval, but again, not mode of test scores. So like we don't actually know what the kids scored on their math test. So all those specifics cannot be answered from this graph. It would be a much more vague conversation. Uh, again, for set of, sake of time, I'm going to skip putting them on a histogram because I don't think you're going to have to do that. Tallying, again, is, is optional. Frequency, they're not in order. I would say the general rule is when they're not in order, definitely tally and then do frequency because, again, or at least be very good at, like, marking and staying focused in the list. Or put them in order and then just go to town. I'm going to skip that one because that one's a little too basic, to be honest. I will put it on the answer key that I post later. This page and the last page, EOC level. So, again, if they're knocking your socks off today, don't panic. You just need to be exposed to as many as possible. And you've got plenty of days. This is the first day that we're really working on in our class. So, I'm not expecting you to just, like, answer these correct and it feel really easy. But I do want you to have the exposure. So... And a, this histogram shows the height of students in Kira's class. So heights of students, I would make sure you're paying attention again to the labeling of things because I'm sure you've run across it where they'll give you inches and then they ask in feet. Uh, the biggest thing, like I told you, the computations are very similar to things you've done in the past, but it's the quality of question, like the wording they use is where they're going to stump you. So read, read again do the math, and then read one more time. And I know that feels like a lot, but every question you can get right on your EOC and your test is putting you in the positive. And just from day one, your EOC will be on campus at the end of the semester. We don't have dates yet. That I will let you know probably within two weeks of the EOC. It's at the end of the semester. And the fun part is if you get like 16 questions of the 60 right, you're likely to pass. So every day, my goal in every unit we do is to let you find at least one that you know you've got in your back pocket when you show up for the EOC. So that's why I'm going to end the class with whatever free time, if we don't play a game, if it's not re like repetitive over something we've already been, with EOC style questions. Because like I said, if you walk in there knowing you have 10 in your back pocket, you only have to guess well at six. And obviously I would love you walk in there and think you know everything and it's going to be great. But worst case scenario, you got 10 in your back pocket and you just have to guess well of the 50 to get six more right to pass that bad boy for the county. And that's why our biggest goal is for you to pass because we don't want you to have to repeat math one. So what is the total number of students in the class? Hopefully we know we're not looking at height to answer that question. Yeah, good girl. Getting after it. I like it. So you have options. But the idea is, you know, this is two. This is four, five, four, and one. Add all those together, and that's where you get 16. So that's your total number of pieces of data. Again, you can't answer range. You can't an answer anything about that. Uh, later, we'll get into finding the mean, median, and all those fun things-ish, but you can't give an accurate, like, numerical answer because you don't know what's actually happening within those intervals since we don't have a list of data. Um. Frequency distribution, again, that's what this table is called. So how often did these things happen? So like I said, they can be titles, like instead of numbers, so instead of intervals. So how many players play baseball? You're going to go to your baseball. Notice that it is numbered by tens, and it's about halfway through. So we could easily call that 75. So how many players play baseball? 75. Which game is the least popular? So which one has the smallest bar? You guys tell me. Football, baseball, tennis, or basketball? Yes, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
What is the difference of players playing tennis and basketball? So we need to know how many play tennis. It's going to be 60. How many play baseball? That's going to be 80. And we know difference means we're going to do what operation? Do you remember what word that means? Different or what operation difference means? Add, subtract, multiply, divide. Good, I'm liking the answers in the box, but first, I know I'm, I'm really dumbing it down to like Barney style, but we got to start slow and easy and you guys get ma major good grades on this stuff because we're going to get into some harder stuff. What does the word difference mean? I just want to make sure vocabulary is still in the front. Of, I don't know when the last time you took a math class. Difference means we're going to do what operation? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So difference is subtract. So what is the difference? Good job, thanks. Um, between those two. So our basketball players are 80. Tennis players were 60. So the difference between the two is going to be 20. And again, we're talking about people and things. So you want to think in context. If you happen to grab 60 and subtract 80, that's fine. But it's not a negative 20. Um, the difference is 20. So it is 20 people, number of players. So they can't be negative 20 people. There's no such thing. You're either a people or not a people. Like you exist or do not exist. There's not negative. So um, make sure in context, again, that you're reading and it makes sense. How many players play football? So again, you're going to go up here and find between 80 and 90. It's right in the middle. So it's going to call 85. And which game has more than 80 players? And now that I've written the numbers at the top of all of them, hopefully that one's a very easy one to answer. Which game has more than 80? 80 is not more than 80. 80 is equal to 80. So that's not going to count. 60 is less than 80. 75 is less than 80. So 85. So football has the most players. Now, also, if we're being logical, if you've ever watched sports, football teams are a lot bigger than basketball teams, tennis teams, baseball teams, so it makes sense. Uh, I will say that's one cool thing about most of your questions in Math 1 is they are logical. Um, the last couple, we have one minute, so I don't want to overkeep you because I have kept you for 45 minutes. These are great. They're going to get a little bit more thought-provoking. I would challenge you to look at them because, again, you're looking at EOC-style questions, and if you can walk in there knowing you're not going to come out of the park, that's a big win. So I will post them with answers probably in a couple days, maybe Monday, to give everybody time to get the Ed Puzzle done and to get work done today and you get some, some feelers out on it. But otherwise, I will post an answer key for all of this, guys.